Okay, so here's what it looks like in the Unity game engine. Now, I did a few things, so I'll show you what I did. Here's the texture. I had to make sure that texture was in the room one. So I think I did that in the last video, but that's just me copying and pasting it within room one. I turned it to 2048. Okay, and so instead of 4096, now I could have picked 4096, but you know why? I, I The whole reason I chose 4096 was to trick it into using the highest resolution because within Unity, I always have the ability to go back now to 4096 if I want. Okay, so I made the maximum, not the minimum required. All right, also, I have a few uh, textures out here. The hardest thing for people to understand is the scale, okay? So when you import the actual asset, you're going to get this, and then you're going to get a scale going on. And you're going to have to figure out what the scale of the first-person controller is. So what I usually do is drag a first-person controller out first, and then I drag the Room 1C over from the other side. Another thing is before you drag the room 1C over, you should always put generate colliders on. That way when I hit play with the first person controller, what will happen is I fall to the floor and I don't collide with the I don't fall through the floor. So you can see this is a very eerie scene. Everything's lit barely. And you can also see that the, what the light ratio is because for me, um, exporting the well-lit light scenario back in Maya doesn't really mean it's going to be well-lit here. So you can ramp lights up in Maya and you can kind of get the idea how lights traverse um, through um, the applications. Now there's another thing you can do to brighten up the scene of course. You know if you, all, if you have Photoshop you can start messing around with the exposure ratio. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. So. Assets, standard assets, second room of hell. Oh, there we go, baked TIFF. So this is a TIFF file, and it's 4096, so there's lots of resolutions to play around with. I want to leave the color alone, don't manage it. And I have this. This is where you could start adding like blood to it too, if you wanted to. Like if I wanted a blood smear on the wall, I can certainly paint that in. If I wanted a something on the floor right there, a blood splatter, I can paint that in, no problem whatsoever. So that's that's the nice thing about having it all kind of baked right here. Also what I could do is go into exposure and I can expose this up a little bit and brighten it up if I wanted to. Okay, and you can do this, you make uh, a workflow, so you can save that out and then you can go back to Unity and you can find that what will happen is it'll, it should update. And that texture is really big. Um, as a file goes, not within Unity because it's it's geared down to uh, 2048. But now you can see that that looks a lot better. Very cool. And there's the shadows. It's just dark enough to be macabre enough to actually lose yourself in the level. Very nice. Okay, now if you wanted to add, let's say, a point light. What I would do there is suggest to you that the point light 
and point lights should match up. So here's my point light node right here. Okay, I kind of remember where that's at. And I can move to view. Oops. And I can hit, this is where I hit F, sorry. If I F. I can now take my other point light and move it to view. And I think that puts it right over the top of the other one. It does. So now you can see I have lights that match up with the actual lights that I brought in from Maya. That's another little trick. There's so many little tricks. I love it. That's what I love about this stuff. You actually get to see what it looks like in game. There's no messing around. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the little series of doing the textures. We'll go on to the next project now uh, after I give you an assignment in the next video.